Konnichiwa! Welcome to Fight CNYC. My name is Ben Chan and I am here with Dominic Morrow, which means it's time to talk about UFC 144, UFC in Japan. Now, this is going to be a four hour fight card featuring seven fights, and I'm not talking about undercard and main event, I'm talking about seven main event fights, or, or seven main card fights, I mean. And they're going to take a break for a 20 minute pop concert in the middle. I'm not even joking. That's, this is that's... a thing. I think that's what I'm looking the most for. Oh yeah, no, the pop definitely music. can't wait for the pop singing. The fighting, man. I love Japanese pop music. Um, I'm not Japanese. Um, but uh, for the fan that can guess what I am, um, I guess I'll send you some an autograph. Um, so anyway, <laughs> let's start talking about the fight card. The first of seven fights. We have Anthony Pettis versus Joe Lozon. Uh, yeah, this fight's gonna be very exciting. Uh, Anthony Pettis, I don't think he really knows how to put on uh, a boring fight, with the exception of the Clay Guida fight, where he spent the entire time on his back wondering, why didn't I train submissions off my back? So, uh, Anthony Pettis, the Showtime kick guy, jumps off the wall, kicks the dude in the face, steals the decision at the very last minute. Everybody loves that guy. He's, he's 23, he's still a rising star. Uh, you know, he's got all the time in the world to, to figure out what he didn't do for the, uh, uh, for that fight, for the Clay Guida fight. And he's fighting Joe Lozon, who's uh, actually overperforming. I mean, it, Lozon upset Melvin Gallard, who was only a fight or two away from the championship, in stunning fashion. I mean, you know, knocked him down, staggered him, choked him out. Uh, Lozon, you know, doesn't get nearly enough respect that he deserves. So uh, I, I think the game plan for Pettis is really simple. Just wait, because Joe Lozon doesn't have a good gas tank. He's dangerous for the first couple of minutes of the fight, like the Gabe Rudiger fights, uh, which was over in a couple minutes, or the uh, Melvin Gillard fight, which was over in a minute. Uh, Lozon doesn't have a good gas tank. If Pettis can just take him into deeper water, Pettis has fought five round fights before, Pettis looked fresher in the fifth round than, uh, than Lozon does in the second round a lot of times. So, uh, so I, is there anything that Lozon can do? Yeah, Lozon's got to be aggressive. Lozon's got to drag the fight to the ground. I, I think he's got better submission skills than Pettis. Pettis certainly, you know, knows his way around on the ground. Uh, you know, he might not be able to submit Clay Guida off his back, but very few people do. So uh, I think if Lozon can drag the fight to the ground, he stands a good chance of getting to submit Pettis, uh, maybe make him make a mistake because he's trying to stand back up, because Pettis is going to want to stand back up. He's got way better kickboxing than Lozon. So uh, I, I think Pettis wins this fight by knockout in the second round. Okay, and then our next fight, we have a guy who's fighting his 50th uh, UFC or MMA fight versus a guy nicknamed the Iron Broom. Uh, <laughs> Bart Palaszewski versus Hatsu Hioki. Yeah, Bart Palaszewski is the KG veteran at 28 years of age. He's fighting his 50th fight, or he's, this is his 50, 51st actually, 51st pro fight. Um, he, he's been everywhere, he's seen everything. Uh, he's got a lot of, you know, knockouts, 17 knockouts to his name. He's only been stopped a few times. Uh, he's got 17, or 16 defeats, excuse me. So he he's definitely knows a little bit about losing. And uh, he's fighting the hometown favorite, Hatsu Hioki, who was really heavily hyped when he fought in Sengoku in Japan. He had this great, amazing match against Marlon Sandro for the, uh, uh, the championship in Sengoku uh, before he came over to the UFC, but he looked completely underwhelming in his fight, his UFC debut fight against George Roop. Uh, Hioki had mount a couple of times, Hioki got Roop down a few times, and he's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. He, he's the iron broom, he knows how, what he's doing on the ground. I can only assume that's what broom means, I got nothing. Mm -hmm. But he, he, uh, Hioki didn't get anything going against Roop on the ground, which when you've got a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you're known for your ground skills, to get, a, to get, to get mount on a guy and not do anything with it, a transition to side control because you don't know what to do with the mount, I, I don't know what happened there, but uh, uh, hopefully he looks a little bit more impressive. Palaszewski I think is overmatched on the ground in this fight. Uh, we'll see about the striking game, but I think if Hioki can get the fight to the ground, I think he can end it. What's your prediction? Well, I mean, if the same Hioki shows up that showed up against George Roop, I think Palaszewski wins the decision. I don't think Hioki looked very good in his opening fight. Uh, if it was some nerves, if it was some jitters, if, you know, he just panicked a little bit, if Roop was just way too big for him, uh, then, you know, Hioki shows up a lot better. Uh, I think Hioki wins, you know, arm bar, maybe arm triangle, something like that in the third round. So, I want to believe, but, uh, you know, it, not the way it was last time. Okay, and then uh, after that we have uh, Tim Boach versus Yushin Okiyami. Okami, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yushin Okami. Yeah, uh, Tim Boach, he's a fascinating guy, not necessarily in the ring. Uh, he's a former social worker uh, turned Jeet Kune Do artist. So he, he's, you know, got some judo trips, he's got some weird Jeet Kune Do teep kick things, I don't and, know. Uh, 
Joe Rogan's going to talk about that. So Okami's looking for a win? Well, yeah, uh, this is Okami's first fight since the, uh, the Anderson Silva, you know, annihilation of him. I mean, he looked like garbage in the Anderson Silva fight. Nobody looks good against Anderson Silva. N nobody does. Maybe Chael Sonnen, but uh, Okami's really, you know, he, he doesn't lose often, but when he does, it's to guys like, you know, Anderson Silva, Rich Franklin, and Chael Sonnen. I mean, you know, he, he's a top-tier middleweight. Um, who's, you know, looking to get back on the winning path after so losing you, to Anderson Silva. You lose to Anderson Silva and then you go fight a social worker to get a... I, I think that's... Just, <laughs> no, that seems unfair. I work with social workers, so I mean, it's just... It's not fair. No, no, and, I, and really, I don't see a way that the social worker wins this fight. Like, just like in life. I mean, I don't see how the social worker really wins here. Uh, Okami's got better grappling, better wrestling. You know, he stuffed Mark Munoz for three straight rounds. He's going to stuff uh, Tim Boach's takedowns. I'm almost positive. I mean, uh, and Okami is striking, you know, it's not great, but Boach doesn't really have any head movement. You know, for all the Jeet Kune Do training, he, he doesn't fight like Bruce Lee. Uh, Boach is going to get outstruck on the feet. He's going to get out wrestled. He's going to get grappled. I, I really think that Okami wins this fight however he feels like winning the fight. Although Okami's a pretty slow starter, so this is probably going to be by decision. So Okami um, will maybe feel the power of positive thinking uh, on Saturday in Japan. All right. And then uh, next up, we have two guys that are... Uh, this is like the UFC's version of a pink slip match. Two guys that are coming off uh, losing streaks that really need the win. And they're both cutting weight. Uh, Jake Shields versus uh, Yoshihiro Akiyama. Uh, Akiyama. Yeah, uh, Jake Shields, he's on a two-fight losing streak, the first of his very long career. Uh, he lost to George St. Pierre by decision, and he just got knocked out by Jake Ellenberger. And, you know, that's kind of a, this is kind of a new thing for, for Jake Shields. So he's, you know, if he loses this fight, I don't know if he gets cut, maybe he fights on the undercard, but it's not a good thing to go from, you know, fighting for a belt to, you know, fighting for a paycheck. Um, Jake Shields, great grappler, great chin. You know, he took uh, Dan Henderson's best shot in the first round of their fight and, you know, successfully won a decision against uh, Henderson. Great grappling. I mean, he, he's just, he knows what he's doing on the ground. He's got American Jiu-Jitsu tattooed on his arm. He doesn't like the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu title. I don't know. But he trains with the Diaz brothers, so, you know, he, he knows what he's doing on the ground. And he's fighting a judo black belt, Yoshihiro Akiyama, who has lost three fights in a row. Um, granted, Akiyama was in the middleweight division, and he was way too small for the division. I mean, his last fight, he got you know blown out of the water by Vitor Belfort, who probably had a 20-pound weight advantage going into the fight. I mean, that was just obscene, frankly. Uh, but Akiyama puts on some good fights. He's you know had four fights in the UFC, and three of them have been fight of the nights. So you know, unfortunately, he's only one. He's only one, one of them. One of them, yeah. So it's it's not going. The fight of the nights are not going his way. But uh, he he puts on an exciting fight. I think that's what the UFC is banking on here. Um, you know, on paper, I think that Akiyama can hang with Shields on the ground. But I mean, Akiyama got submitted by Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben's got as many DUIs in the last five years as he has submission victories. That's bad. That's very bad. I, I, I think Jake Shields can really, you know, twist Akiyama into knots if the fight goes to the ground. But you know what happens when you get two skilled grapplers in the ring. They have a shitty kickboxing match. So, uh, you know, this, this fight could go either way. But ideally, Akiyama puts on a good show for the hometown crowd. Okay. And then next up, we have two fighters with iron chins. We have Mark Hunt versus Chuck Congo. Yeah, Mark Hunt, uh, he, made his, uh, he made his name in kickboxing for having just a you know, inhuman threshold for punishment, like Homer Simpson style kickboxing. He won the K1 World Grand Prix in 2001. Yeah, he was young back then, he was slightly less round. I mean, he was always a round fighter, but uh, you know, it's Mark Hunt. He hits like a freight train, and he could probably take a shot on the chin from a freight train, frankly. He's fighting Czech Congo, you know, French kickboxer, heavyweight gatekeeper, uh, never really learned how to grapple. I don't know how you can do mixed martial arts and really only know the one martial art, but uh, you know, he's pretty good at the kickboxing, but he got taken down by a clinically unconscious, out on his feet, Cain Velasquez, three times in their fight. I mean, he, he's great at hitting people in the head, but you know, he's got to finish the job. And, and yeah, short of the Pat Berry fight, Czech Congo doesn't really do that. So uh, these two guys, great chins, they hit really hard. I think this is going to be one of those crowd-pleasing slugfests that everybody likes to see. Um, you know, Mark Hunt's a favorite from back in his pride fighting days when he lost six in a row. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, they, they like the, uh, the hometown guy coming home to, uh, or not hometown, but, uh, you know, he used to fight in, the, in pride, so 
Uh, they like the guy to come home and, and put on a good show for the crowd. What's your prediction? Oof. Well, uh, my heart says Hunt, but he's over the hill. I think I gotta say check Congo by decision. I think Congo's striking is uh, definitely more technical. Uh, Hunt's heart really hasn't been in the game for, for uh, or the, the fighting game for the past few years. He's put together a couple of victories though, so uh, maybe. But I, I gotta say Congo by decision. Okay, and then next up we have uh, two fighters that might be better suited for movies than for mixed martial arts. We have uh, uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson, Mr. T, versus uh, Ryan Bader, also known as Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, Rampage Jackson got called out by uh, Ryan Bader. I don't really know what that's all about, but uh, uh, Bader entered 2011 as one of the top prospects alongside John Jones and Phil Davis. And then he fought John Jones and got steamrolled. I mean, he looked just lost against John Jones. Now, frankly, nobody's looked good against John Jones since then. But uh, Ryan Bader proceeded to get uh, choked out by uh, an ancient Tito Ortiz, and now he's just in free fall in the light heavyweight rankings. I mean, he's not even top 10. He's probably not even top 15. Uh, so uh, Ryan Bader just needs a victory. Uh, he's a strong wrestler who's, uh, you know, got decent striking, but again, he, he got outstruck by Tito Ortiz, you know, got, he, he uh, ate that little short hook that knocked him down before the, uh, the submission. And uh, he, he's fighting Quentin Jackson, uh, Rampage, the, the guy who uh, used to pick people up and slam them all over the ring in pride before he came over to the UFC, you know, won and then lost the championship. Rampage is a, another crowd favorite from back in the pride days who's coming over to fight uh, in the UFC in Japan. Uh, Rampage, really good wrestler, he doesn't really wrestle anymore. I mean, he uses his wrestling to keep the fight standing where he tries to outbox his opponents, but unfortunately, his version of boxing only has hooks. I mean, no jabs, no straights, no uppercuts, he just throws hooks. He's got a great sense of timing and a lot of power in his hands, so they're effective. But, uh, I mean, if you know his only trick, then you can sort of avoid them. Uh, I don't know that Ryan Bader can, though. I mean, I, I think that uh, Jackson's better on every front that uh, Bader could hope to be. And uh, if Rampage comes in motivated, you know, and not thinking about the, uh, the A-Team sequel, <laughs> then uh, uh, I think Rampage wins this fight handily. Well, we know for sure, though, that win or lose, that the party will be in Jackson's suite. Oh, yes. Gotta be. Definitely. Okay. And then in the main event, we have a championship fight. We have uh, Frankie Edgar versus Benson Henderson. Uh, this fight, I, I, you know, this whole card is stacked, but to end on this fight, this is just amazing. Uh, Frankie Edgar, really dominant champion. I mean, he's, he's really only defended his title against two people now. I mean, he, he fought Gray Maynard twice. He fought BJ Penn twice. It's good to see him moving on and, and actually defending his title against people not named Gray or BJ. So. Uh, you know, he's a lightning fast striker. He really actually probably belongs at 145, but he, he beats bigger, stronger opponents at 155. You know, he just darts in and out of the pocket, lands his shots, gets back out. You know, you can't catch him. If you do manage to take him down, you know, he just pops right back up and, you know, starts drilling you in the face again. So what does Henderson bring to the table? Well, Henderson's actually a lot of the same style. I mean, he's, he's fast, he's, you know, slick with his striking, he gets in and out of the pocket good footwork, uh, you know, just lots of cardio, and, you know, completely incapable of being submitted. I mean, he's just, he's uh, nicknamed Gumby because he just doesn't break ever. Uh, and Henderson, you know, cardio for days, really slick wrestling, hard to keep him down. Uh, you know, both of these guys actually really evenly matched. Uh, it, this is going to be a great fight. I don't really see any advantage, any area where uh, one guy's got a huge advantage. Uh, Edgar's shown a lot more dazzling striking in his fights with Maynard and Penn, but uh, this fight's really even and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. Got to be fight of the night candidate for sure. What are you predicting? Oof. Well, I mean, after Edgar knocked out Gray Maynard, it's hard to uh, hard to say that he only goes to decisions anymore, but I mean, he did fight, you know, almost 20 rounds with those uh, two guys and, and put in, you know, uh, three decisions. So, uh, I mean, I think Frankie Edgar can win the knockout, or can uh, win by knockout, but uh, if he does, it's probably going to be in the later rounds when he starts to uh, uh, outpace Benson Henderson. So, let's go with uh, knockout fourth round, Frankie Edgar. Okay, so UFC 144 in Japan this Saturday. Tune in and watch all seven fights. And the pop concert. Right. <laughs> How did I forget that? Thank you very much for watching Fight CNYC. Sayonara.